Hi, I'm Aaron, and I will be your narrator today in our seventh edition of Short Lessons in Native North American Theater. We are going to talk about a pivotal figure in contemporary Native American theater, Hane Gigama. Before we get started, we would like to give a profound and sincere message of gratitude to Professor Gigama, who was gracious enough to engage in a telephone interview with one of our group members. In a field where information is often scarce or factually suspect, we humbly appreciate that he was able to take time out of his day to provide supplemental information and wisdom in order to enrich the discipline of Native American theater studies. We hope that we are able to do Gigama justice and communicate the true gravity of his contributions and influence in service of the indigenous community in North America. Hane Gigama was born in Lawton, Oklahoma on June 22, 1945 to Kiowa, Delaware parents, and he attended Anadarko High School in Caddo County, Oklahoma. Although Gigama pursued a journalism major in his undergraduate years at Oklahoma, he was interested in theater and playwriting. His dream was to have an entire theater company composed solely of Native Americans. This idea stemmed from his belief that past portrayals of Native Americans in film and television were incredibly derogatory to their cultural and mental well-being. Gigama wanted to create a realistic image of Native peoples instead of the deeply painful stereotypes and cliches shown in the media. He dropped out of college in 1970 and was selected by the National Indian Youth Council to be an intern Senate aide to Edward M. Kennedy, where he wrote a proposal which would contribute to the new national American identity. It contained his plan for the creation of an Indian theater company. Just one problem, he had no funds to kickstart the project. In 1971, he finally got his first big break. Ellen Stewart, the founder of La Mama Experimental Theater, agreed to co-sponsor his company's productions, and at the age of 26, Gigama founded the American Indian Theater Ensemble, America's first and only American Indian company at the time, with a goal to erase the stereotypes of Native Americans that dominated mainstream consciousness, even deconstructing these assumptions that had developed within the minds of Native Americans as well. The establishment of this company reflects the wider contemporary social movements in the 1970s, specifically in the wake of protests on Alcatraz in 1969 and Mount Rushmore in 1970. Because this was the first all-American Indian theater company, Gigama wanted to do things right. He wanted the participation of as many tribes as possible while also recruiting those who were the most talented and most committed to the ensemble's intentions. He actually achieved a good amount of diversity, recruiting members from Aztec, Navajo, Blackfeet, Aleut, Papago, Taos, Pueblo, Cherokee, Mescalero, Apache, Skokomish Yakima, and Cheyenne tribes. To quote Gigama, the troupe worked tirelessly over the next several years to create and perform original plays for and about Indians in a wide range of venues across the U.S. and abroad. And in 1972, along with Robert Shorty's Nahaz Zan, Gigama's Body Indian premiered at La Mama Experimental Theater Club in New York City a story about an intoxicated man whose leg is severed by a train while he is passed out on the tracks. Yigama sought to tell a story about contemporary Indian life, addressing problems of alcoholism and self-destruction in the Native American community. When interviewed about the meaning of the work, Gigama noted body Indian is not about temperance. It concerns itself with the complex relationships that Native Americans share. Bobby's friends are his strength and his destruction. They provide a closeness that is both warm and genuine. By 1973, the ensemble's name had changed to the Native American Theater Ensemble due to the inability of non-Native Americans to understand First Nations people as human beings lawfully residing in the United States. This was part of a continued effort from the 1960s that continued through the 1970s to achieve equality for marginalized communities. Gigama was on a roll, premiering a second play, Foghorn, in West Berlin, a series of mock improvisations and vignettes. Foghorn is a theatrical satire designed to entertain and teach. Filled with American Indian white caricatures and cliches, the play reflects the history of stupidity and racism in American society in dealing with Native Americans in cases of education, religion, sex, television, treaties, and the areas of human and governmental relationships. Foghorn toured as a key component of the American Indian movement, or AIM, in the U.S., and a year later, it was performed on March 1, 1974, in Minneapolis, the birthplace of the AIM, at the prestigious Guthrie Theater, and subsequently, on June 22, 1974, at the Festival of American Indian Arts in La Granda, Oregon. Gigama's Kuhn Kons Coyote also came into being that year and was performed in West Berlin. 
Nate relocated to Oklahoma City in late 1974, and the next year, 49 premiered, a theatrical piece that provides a blend of contemporary and traditional elements in Native American cultures. The play focuses on the gathering that takes place around midnight when American Indians meet for singing, dancing, drinks, and conversation. Weaving both past and present, 49 contains themes of hope and resurrection, unity and old tribal values instead of a reliance on Euro-Western society. The group eventually disbanded in 1976 due to insufficient funding, but it remains a key contribution to the fields and gave rise to several other American Indian companies. In Gigama's words, it was a miracle that it happened at all and that it happened as long as it did. Gigama went on to attend University of Indiana in 1979 for theater with a minor in journalism. After receiving his BA in 1980, he published his first three plays, Body Indian Foghorn and 49, in a single volume, New Native American Drama, Three Plays. In 1984, Gigama began teaching in the theater department at UCLA. That same year, he became executive director of the American Registry for the Performing Arts in Los Angeles. Three years later, he co-founded the American Indian Dance Theater, which tours throughout the U.S. and abroad. Gigama also worked extensively as a director, producer, screenwriter for Native American television and film in the late 1980s and early 1990s. He wrote the company's two specials for the PBS's Great Performances Dance in America series, directing Finding the Circle in 1989 and co-directed and producing Dances for the New Generations in 1992. Dance in America American Indian Dance Theater was nominated for an Emmy for Best Outstanding Children's Program. With Michael Grant, he wrote The Native Americans, a six-part historical series broadcast by Turner Network Television in October 1994. For Turner, he produced the films Broken Chain, Geronimo, Lakota Woman, Tecumseh, and Crazy Horse. Founded in 1997, Project Hoop, Honoring Our Origins and Peoples Through Native American Theater, is a diverse initiative designed to promote Native American theater artistically, academically, and professionally, and develops different empowering programs and opportunities in tribal colleges and communities for Native students. It gives these students and Native community members a chance to hold positions of power and leadership within their community and in theater, film, and television. Gigama is able to pour his passion for Native theater into this program and make a positive difference among Native communities. In our memorable conversation with him, Gigama stated, It is still a very long road ahead, but if we really put our minds to it, we can make it less of a long road. But it is challenging. Native American theater continues to be a developing field, as well as a site for the indigenous community to cultivate narratives that have significant impact on the past, present, and future, and resonate across consciousnesses. Gigama's continuing work reminds us that there is still much to be learned, crafted, performed, and promoted. We are lucky to have the privilege to contribute something meaningful and useful to the field, and hopefully our efforts in this class have served to shorten that long road, even just a little.